Hey guys, everybody's joining. We're at uh, Camelback Family Planning in Phoenix, Arizona. Pushing the dog. Pray that hearts are changed and babies are safe. Thank you guys. Hey guys, everybody's joining. We're at Camelback Family Planning, preaching the gospel, speaking for the voices. So please be praying for us. Pray the hearts will change. The babies are saved today. Um, if you guys are near Camelback in Phoenix, Arizona, you know, come out one side to preach. We'd love to have you guys out here. So guys,
Uh, we had one person come by and she claimed that she was a Christian and we pointed out to her why she's not when last her son asked her to be asked her husband to stand up to be a man and he became very angry and acted like he was gonna come out of the vehicle out of the form he was on camera. But there's only two of us out here. It's kind of it's a little bit louder down here this morning. So please pray for us. Uh, we want to do what we do for God's glory. We want to see people saved. I had to take a break. I drank too much coffee this morning. But anyway, I'm back. Uh, just pray for us. Uh, and I'm going to be talking about why we need the gospel and what the gospel is. So pray for us. God bless. So the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 1, verse 18, it says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against the ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in an unrighteousness. Because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. God has shown us who He is. It says, For since, this isn't just since Christ died, but since the creation of the world, it says, For since the creation of the world, God's invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. Even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. We know that God, we can look around us and we know that God exists. Every one of us, none of us can say, well, I didn't know. And especially not you guys, because God sent us to tell you of the hope that there is in Jesus Christ. He sent us to preach the Word of God, His Word to you. And the Bible says that God's Word will not return void. It will do what God sends it to do. No, that doesn't mean that He's going to save everyone through His Word. The Bible makes it very plain that God's Word does harden sometimes. Hey guys, everybody's That God's Word, right, camera but it doesn't camera return camera void. Sometimes it converts people's souls. So please be praying. Sometimes it convicts people of their sin. Sometimes it judges people of their sin. Other times it sanctifies those that have been saved. God's word never returns void. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It does exactly what God wants it to do. So you're here today. You're hearing God's word. You're without excuse. In the Garden of Eden, God made it very evident to Adam and Eve who he was. And the devil came, and he, the devil told them that they won't die if they eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, but that they would become like God, knowing good and evil. That they would, if they, if they ate the fruit the, the, from that tree, they, they said, but God knows that in the day that you eat of it, you will come like him. It says, although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God. That's our problem today, still today. You see, we, we know God. We, we, God has made it evident from the beginning of time. He's made it beginning of creation. He made it evident who He is. We know who He is. We know that He exists. We know that He gives us all that we have. We know that the sunshine and the rain, your, your very clothing, the food that you have, everything you have comes from God. But instead of believing God, you see, Adam and Eve, they believe the devil instead of God. Eve, it says in... in Timothy, 1st Timothy chapter 2 verse 14, the woman being deceived fell into transgression and we are her descendants. The Bible makes it plain that we can be deceived. It says in Galatians chapter 6, it says, be not deceived, God is not mocked. We don't mock him. He sees everything. He knows all things. And he will judge righteously. The Bible says he is a righteous judge. So all the they didn't glorify him as God. What does that mean? Well, they, they worship, they believe, and obey. Therefore, they worship the devil instead of God. That's what's happening here. This happens in the world all around us so often. People, they know what the Bible says. They know what God says. They know that it is wrong to murder. And you can say, I've never read the Bible. But you know in your heart that it's wrong to murder. God wrote the law in your heart. You know that, that God exists. You know who God is. You know that He deserves your praise and your adoration. He deserves for you to glorify Him and to thank Him. You know that 
You are not. You shouldn't bow down to anyone but God, because He's given you all that you have. All things come from God. You know that you shouldn't take God's name in vain, but so many of us have. All of us have at some point. We know that we should set a day aside to just worship God and to rest and seek Him. But most of us care only about ourselves. We make ourselves God. We know that we are called to honor our parents in our hearts. We know our parents, our mothers carried us. Our mothers and fathers took care of us. And maybe some of you didn't have that. But God saw to it that you had. You're here. You're alive. You're breathing. Every breath you take comes from God. But if you're here, you're not honoring your parents. Your parents gave you life and you're dishonoring. You're in a place where they murder babies. You know that the Bible makes it, you know in your heart, God wrote it in your heart, that it is wrong to commit adultery, sexual immorality. It is wrong to steal and to lie. It is wrong to murder and to covet. To want that which God has blessed someone else with. You know these things. But you, instead of believing the things that God has written on your heart, you believe the words of the devil instead. You believe that somehow if you murder this baby, or if you give your resources to a place that murders babies, either one is murdering God's eyes. You're supporting a place that murders babies. You believe somehow the words of the devil that everything will be okay, that they can make everything all right for you. That's what Adam and Eve did. They believed Satan. And then what did they do? They obeyed Satan. And because you believe that if you get rid of this baby, you can have your education, your big screen TV, and your fancy cars, your nice furniture, and all the stuff that you want. You don't want to sacrifice for this child that God has blessed you with. You make the choice to come and murder your baby. Adam and Eve, in the same way, God had given them all the trees of the garden, but they didn't glorify him. They weren't. They didn't believe him, and they didn't obey him. Therefore, they didn't glorify him. He says, nor were they thankful. You see, God has blessed you with all that you have. God had given Adam and Eve all the trees of the garden to eat, but they weren't thankful for those trees. Instead, they wanted the one that God said they couldn't have. And that's, that's us. We are their descendants. It's in us. Instead of being thankful for what God has given us, we want that which we are not allowed to have. And so therefore we need a Savior. We need Jesus Christ to come and live in us and change who we are. And what happened to Adam and Eve, literally, when they weren't, when they didn't glorify God, in other words, they didn't believe Him, they didn't obey Him, and they weren't thankful to Him, it says, but became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were dark, and that's what happens to us. Our foolish hearts become darkened because we believe the devil over God. And then what did Adam and Eve do? They professed to be wise, to know more than God, and they went to pick from the tree, and they ate. The Bible literally says, professing to be wise, they became fools. And that's what happens to us, too. That's what's happening here today. We believe somehow that we know more than God, and literally, we become fools before God, before all creation. We become foolish. It says, therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanliness in the lusts of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves. We see that happening in the world around us today. We see, if we read the first five or six chapters in Genesis, that happened there. Literally, it says, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worship and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Adam and Eve, literally, instead of believing God, they believed the creature. They believed the creature, and, they, and, they, and by believing him, the Bible says, they believed the lie instead of the truth of God, and then through that, that was God called that worshiping and serving the creature. By obeying him, by believing him and obeying him, they were worshiping him and serving him. And so, that's what we have, that's what happens to us, that's what happens in the world around us. That's what's happening here today. So what 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 do we do about that? In, in Romans chapter 3, the Bible makes it plain that we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. It says there's none righteous. 
There was one righteous. There was Jesus Christ. The Bible makes it plain that Jesus Christ, truly God, truly man, came to earth. He was tempted in every point, just like you and I, but never sinned. Lived a holy and righteous and just life. And then he went to the cross. He died in my place. Romans chapter 6 says the wages of sin is death. He died. He paid my sin debt. The payment that I have to pay for my sin is death unless someone pays it for me. And Christ did that. But as I was saying earlier, in Romans chapter 6, it makes it plain the evidence of whether we are in Christ or not. It's literally, if, have we died to our sin? It says there's none righteous, but Jesus Christ he can stand in your place. None of us can claim to be righteous. Even the people that are saved in the world can't say we are righteous. Why? Because the only righteousness we have is Christ Jesus. The only righteousness we have is Christ Jesus. We need a Savior. We need someone that is righteous, that lives a holy and righteous and just life, to stand up in the courtroom and take our pain, our, our death, or to take our sin debt, to die in our place. And it can't be just anyone. It can't be anyone that's ever sinned. And it can't be a man, why? But it must be a man. It must be God because only God could stand the punishment of an eternal and infinite God. But at the same time, it must be a man because it wasn't God that sinned, it was man that sinned. That problem, that dilemma was answered in Christ 2,000 years ago. Christ truly God and truly man came to earth and he lived that righteous and perfect life that God commanded you and me to live and then he went to the cross and he died in our place and after he was dead for a time God raised him from the dead God raised him up and he is now seated at the right hand of God the Father interceding for those that will believe in him that will believe that he came and lived in their place and died in their place and then rose from the dead and is now interceding for them the bible makes that plain so there's none righteous none of us can claim to have if you're saved or you're not saved if you're none of us can claim to be righteous there is none righteous but christ it says there's none who understands we don't understand our need of a savior we don't understand the, the heinousness of sin we don't understand the idea that we have sinned against the Holy God and our need of a Savior. It says, there's none who seek for God. The young lady that was here a little while ago, they got so angry, she claimed to be a Christian. So she has to kill her baby because it's going to kill her if she has it. If that baby is there, then God put it there, and He's sovereign, He knows all things. But if she kills that baby, she is a murderer in God's eyes. God is sovereign over all things. But that lady is not a Christian. She does not seek for God. Even Christians don't truly seek for God. It's the Holy Spirit that comes after us. You see, in the Garden of Eden, when, when Adam and Eve sinned, they didn't come to God and say, please forgive me for, our, for my sin. No, they ran and they hid from God. It was God who came after them. And that's what's happening here today. God has sent me to warn you, to tell you that you will stand before the God, a just and righteous God. And if He's just, He can't let you get away with any sin. He can't sweep it under the rug. If someone murdered your, your six-year-old child and you went to court, they caught him and they went to court and the judge said, look at that murderer and said, I want you to know that I'm a forgiving judge. And he looked at you and said, I want you to know I'm a loving judge. And he told the, the guy that murdered your child that he may leave now. You would be angry. You would write every congressman, senator, and try to get everyone to realize that there is an unjust judge on that bench. But you see, the thing is, is God is not unjust. He is a just judge, a righteous judge. You see, if, if the Bible makes it plain in Deuteronomy, Chapter 32, verse 39, that it is God who kills, and it is God who makes alive. And so, we need to, we must come to this understanding. It is God in His grace. He, he gives us our lives. He causes our heart to be. All things continue by the power of His Word. So God, 
He gives us our life. So if he chooses, it says in Deuteronomy, I kill and I make alive. You see, when he kills, he's not murdering. He has, a, he gives life and he has a right to take it. He also, the Bible says, he wounds and he heals and no one can deliver from his hand. So that lady who came out and was so angry because she might die if she had this baby, he can only die if God chooses to take her life. And if she, it is, and if she kills that baby, and it's her time to die, the Bible says God has appointed a time for all men to die. Murdering that baby won't make sure she doesn't die. It just makes her a murderer. It still makes sure she's not a mother. It just makes sure that she's the mother of a baby that she has murdered. And so, God, if I, if I cut the grass, it dies. If I cut a tree, it dies. But I haven't murdered it because it's not, it doesn't have a soul. It's not. But when we, the Bible says that man is created in God's image, and when we murder a baby, then we are unrighteous. We are, we are, the Bible says literally that we should die, that men should kill us if we murder someone. So there's none who seek after God. We don't. It is God always that comes after us. It is God who, who comes and in his grace he, he causes us to weep for our sins through his word. And he also sends us to preach to those that don't know him. So that they will either be they will either be hardened or softened. They will either be convicted or converted or judged or sanctified. So none seek for God. That lady who claimed she had to murder her baby so she wouldn't die, she doesn't know, but it was God coming after her. It was God that was warning her that if she murders that baby, she is still a murderer. A murderer of the baby that, of her baby that she murdered. It says they've all turned aside. All of us. We've all turned aside from what God created us for. You see, God created in, in Genesis chapter 26, or chapter 1, verse 26, it says, God says, let us create man in our image according to our likeness. Hey guys, everybody's joining. And We're at, uh, it says, Life let them take the dominion of the world around them. Uh, but yet uh, we allow ourselves to be enslaved to sin. But we can be free in Christ. But God created us in His image. He didn't create the trees in His image. He didn't create the animals or the birds or the fish. As far as we know, God didn't even create the angels in His image. God created us, us in His image, in his, according to His likeness, to bring Him glory, to represent Him before the rest of creation, so that we would take that we could take dominion over all things, not be enslaved to our sin, and go to doctors that, that, that are not really even doctors who murder babies. So they've all turned aside. It says together they have become unprofitable. We are, we are not profitable for what God has created us for. He created us to bring Him glory, to represent Him before creation and to and to do the things that he has commanded us to do, but we don't do what's profitable to God. But Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Word of God become flesh. He wasn't unprofitable. He never turned aside everything that he did. Everything he did proved that he loved God with all his heart, with all his soul, with all his mind, and all, with all his strength. Everything he did proved he loved his neighbors, he loved himself. He was not unprofitable. Jesus Christ, the Righteous One, was not unprofitable. It says there's none who does good, no, not one. None of us can claim to be good in ourselves. Even if you claim to be a Christian, you can't, you're not good in and of yourself. The only goodness we have is Christ in us. Jesus Christ Himself said, the only one that is good is God, and He was God. God sees us as a mouth being foul and smelling. He literally says the blood. Their throat is an open tomb. He, he sees it. Imagine a tomb that's open with a dead body in it, but that body is, is rotting, stinking. That's how he sees what comes out of our mouth. He says, with their tongue, they practice deceit. You, 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 you,
God considers what comes out of our mouth to be poison, to be poison. But Jesus Christ, the things that came out of his mouth, healed. It was love and kindness. It was truth. Sometimes truth hurts. The person that tells you the most truth is the one who cares most about you. If, we, if I know that you're fixing, if, you, if I know you have cancer and you're fixing to die and I don't tell you I don't love you very much, if I know that the action that you're fixing to take will make you guilty before God for an eternity of eternities to come, and I don't tell you, I don't warn you, then I hate you. Because God has commanded me to warn you. It says, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. We use the same mouth to curse each other as we use to ask God to protect us and take care of us when we're scared. The darkness will come tonight, men and women, mothers and fathers. The darkness will come tonight, and in that darkness, you will long for a Savior. When you can't see what's around you, I want you to know this. Around you right now are demons. Some of the most hideous demons that you've ever imagined in your life. But this action invites them into your life. This action gives them a license to come into your life. And the only thing that can change that is God's Word. God's Holy Word. It is only in His grace and His love. God didn't need to save mankind. When Adam and Eve sinned, He could have ended the, the, race, the human race. He could have this moment end the human race if He wanted to. But God in His grace, God in His grace, took the sin of the world onto himself through his son. You see, it was God in Jesus Christ. It was, it was the word of God, literally. He condescended and became flesh. And he was found in the image of an evil man, a wicked man, who he had created in his glory to represent him in front of creation. But he failed. Adam failed and Christ came. We failed. We did not glorify God. We didn't do what God said. But Christ came and he was tempted like, like we are in all points. And he lived a righteous life. He lived a righteous and a just life. It says, the feet are swift to shed blood. God sees us. You see, some people might even say, well, I've never murdered anyone. But the truth of the matter is, is God considers anger hatred, and He considers hatred murder. And He says there is no eternal life living in a murderer. There's no eternal life abiding in a, in a murderer. Because you see, the only life, Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. There's, he is the only way. He is the only truth. He is the only life, and He will not live in an unrepentant murderer. If he comes in, he will change you. He will cause you to hate debauchery and sin and wickedness and evil. So destruction, it says destruction and misery are in their ways. Literally, God makes it plain that destruction and misery is in the ways of, of those of us, of people in the world. And I would say especially in this place here. This place is not a place that loves you or cares about you. This place wants your money. It's a place of destruction. It's a place of violence, a place of evil. But we're here offering hope. My son is holding a sign that says, we'll adopt your baby, we'll give it life, we'll love it, we'll take care of it. Would you, I plead with you today, would you be reconciled to God? Would you, as Jesus said, repent and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ? It says the way of peace they have not known. You have no peace. You know it in your bed at night, your dreams. In the darkness, you fear the darkness. You know there's evil there. And why? Why do you do all these things? Why do we do these? Why do we not truly seek for God? Why do we not 
Why is there none of us that can claim to be righteous? The Bible makes it plain. It says because there is no fear of God before their eyes. There's no fear of God before their eyes. The only thing that the only, the only fear in me of God is of His Christ in me, the Word of God in me. It is God Himself creating it. And the Bible tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of Christ. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of Christ. That's why we come out here and we preach the Word of God to you so that you will hear the Word of Christ, so that you will have the Gospel of Jesus Christ because we know it is God's power and the salvation. We come out here because we care enough about you to stand out here in public and preach the truth. Would you guys, right now, would you think about it? Would you turn from this place of evil? Would you come and trust Christ? Truly, truly, a lot of people sometimes say that God is just a God of love. What they do is they're creating a God that doesn't exist. They're creating a God in the image, in their own image, in an image contrary hey guys, to what God is doing. In Psalms 55, uh, God says, I hate all who do iniquity. God hates everyone that sins. Also you see, God doesn't safe. put sin into hell. He doesn't put people into hell. The Bible also says in Proverbs, it gives us seven things that are an abomination to God and six that things that are God hates. He says, it uh, says these six things the Lord hates and yet planet. seven are an abomination uh, to Him. Join us. A proud look. And you can preach you come want. to this place so because of pride. We've so offered to help you, but your pride won't let you accept help. God hates a proud look. A lying tongue. The Bible makes it plain that God hates a lying tongue. And if you're here, you've lied to yourself. You believe the lie of the devil. You're here believing that some, for some reason it's okay to murder your baby. But if you murder your baby, you can have all of which you want. Here, God hates a lying tongue. It says God hates the hands that shed innocent blood. Imagine that. What could be more innocent than the baby in the womb? What could be more innocent than the baby inside of who it is? It's never stolen. It's never lied. It has never ever committed adultery. It has not ever coveted or dishonored its parents. The baby in the womb is innocent. And God hates the hands that shed innocent blood. God hates the heart that devises wicked plans. If you came here, you made a plan. You made phone calls. You made appointments. You came to this place. You made plans to come and murder this baby or to come to the place where they uh, support a place that murders babies it says god hates a heart that devises wicked plans imagine that god hates a heart what is this what is this that have you have devised a wicked plan you made a wicked plan to murder your baby god hates the feet that are swift to run to evil you have, you've come to this place, you've run here, this place where they murder babies. God hates feet, the feet that run, that are swift to run to evil. And God hates the false witness who speaks lies, the one who sows discord to men among his brothers. You are in this place that you have borne false witness against your child. You said he must die, like the lady that came out so angry earlier. She said, her baby has to die or she will die. No. We are not. If somebody puts a gun to my head and tells me to shoot my wife, if I shoot my wife, I'm still guilty of murder. I don't kill the baby to save my own life. That would be wickedness. That would be murder. She has witnessed that baby to death, that it must die. Instead of trusting Christ as he has commanded us to, and trusting him to take care of her, and resigning herself to whatever God wants, she has loved her life more than she has loved her neighbor. She has not loved her neighbors herself. And that's what you're doing today. You're in this place because you love your life more than you love your child. The baby, the gift that God gave you, as it says in Psalm 120, uh, 127 verse 3, it says, that the, the baby, your baby is a heritage from God. It's his inheritance to you. Think about that. An inheritance from the God of heaven himself. 
to you. He says it's a reward, it's a gift from God. Does this not affect you? Do you not, do you not care about anything but yourself? Is it all about you? Me, myself, and I. I don't care about the baby that God gave me. I don't care about what do you think that baby's saying? Do you know how they murder babies here? They rip them out of the, your body at a limited time. They tear the legs off. The baby's still alive, but they rip its leg off. They rip its arms off and crush its skull. Imagine that. Your baby will experience that. If you take a pill, then it will, it will starve to death, literally. It will die of oxygen deprivation. What could be righteous about that? God hates. God hates a false witness who speaks lies. Friends, listen to me. There is hope. There is hope regardless of what I've just said. Now the Bible says in Romans 6, it says the wages of sin is death. It also says the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. If we could imagine living for an eternity of eternities, everybody you've ever known has died. But Jesus says, anyone who believes in me, though he dies, he will still live the ground living. But the Bible makes it plain that we, in our fallenness, are dead. But Christ can raise us from the dead. In Ephesians chapter 2, God says, it says, in, in you, he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked, according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. We were once just like you. The only righteousness we claim is that Christ came and lived in us and caused us to hate sin. The Bible says anyone who is in Christ is a new creature. Old things have passed away, behold, new things have come. If you're in Christ, if you claim to be in Christ, come out. Don't continue in this place of evil. There's hope and forgiveness in Christ Jesus. But there is no hope of forgiveness and this place here cannot save you. This place here cannot save you from God. If you're supposed to die, being pregnant won't cause you to die. If you're supposed to die, you're going to die. There's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing anyone. It says in Psalm 32, verse 39, it says, Now see that I, even I, am He, and there is no God beside me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Nor is there any who can deliver from my hand. What that means is this. No one can deliver from God's hand. If you're supposed to get sick, you're going to get sick. A mask won't save you. If you're supposed to be healed from that, God is going to heal you. And no mask or any doctor is going to change that. But if you're to die, if you're pregnant here today and, and you're afraid of death, Turn to Christ. No one can deliver from God's hand. If you're meant to die, you will die. But it is God. He can make you alive in Christ so that if you do die, you will still live. You will still live. In Revelation chapter 21, the Bible tells us, it says, it says but for the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. What does that mean? You see, we are dead now. We've died. We've driven. Those that, that are not in Christ are dead. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, he says, and you, he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, were dead because of our sins. Oh yeah, you say, oh, I'm not dead. I can feel, I can see. But you're dead to any longing to be righteous. You're dead to want to know God. You want to know the God that you created in your mind, the God that is all love, that is not just, that is not righteous, that won't judge people for murder. You've made up that God in your mind and you love Him. 
But the Bible makes it plain that literally you're being controlled by demons. It says, it says, And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world. If you're in this place, you're walking according to the course of this world, and you're not alive yet, you're still dead, and you're, you're still enslaved to your sins. According to the prince of the power of the air, talking about faith, the spirit, who now works in the sons of disobedience. Who are the sons of disobedience? Those who don't obey God, Jesus tells us, commands us, that we are to trust God, we are to trust Christ. If you're not obeying that, then you have a demon working in you. He might be portraying him as, a, as an angel of life, but it's a demon. If you're not in Christ, then you are controlled by demons. And in words, it says, we were just like that among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, if this is you, if you're not in Christ, and if you're in this place, you're not in Christ. You don't know Him. You, you might be deceiving yourself that you know Him, but you know it deep down, you know you don't. It says, but God, but God who is rich in mercy because of His great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses and sins, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us so in, in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourself it is a gift of God that no one may boast. God can save you. He can change who you are. The Bible makes the claim that those that are in Christ are not in Christ because of themselves, but because of a gift. A gift of God, a gift of faith. It says that, for we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. If you're in Christ, you're you long to do good works. You're not in a place where they murder babies. You're not in a place to murder babies where because you're afraid of your own death. You love your, your neighbors. You love yourself. And you will give your baby life. And we're here today because we would long that for you. We're here today because we want you to know the hope that is in Christ Jesus. To know that we will come alongside of you and we will help you. We're not here to try and make you think we hate you or mad at you. We're not mad. We really are not. We're not we, we, do. we care about you. We're, we care enough to come out here and tell you the truth. To tell you the hope of Jesus Christ. And to offer to adopt your baby to take care of it. Or to stand alongside you and walk with you until that baby is an adult if need be. Would you come today and let us help you? I want you to imagine how many babies are dying here today. I got here this morning about 7.30 and there was people lined out, out up outside waiting to murder their babies. And you're still at 9 o'clock, right? 9 after 9, you're still here. You're still lined up out here. Imagine that. How many babies were dying here today? And to go, and, and, in Genesis, when Cain killed his brother Abel, God told Cain, he said, your brother's blood cries out from the ground. What do you think it was saying? The Bible says that God breathed the breath of life into Adam and he became a living being. The Bible says the life is in the blood. Literally. The life is in the blood, and when, able, or when, they, when you spill that baby's blood into the ground, that life is in the ground. And God said his blood cries out from the ground. What was it saying? What was it saying to God when it cried out? What do you think it was saying to God? When we go all the way to the other side of the Bible in Revelation, the martyrs who have been killed, the, the innocent martyrs who have been killed for their belief, their faith in Jesus Christ, they were praying, they were saying, God, when are you going to bring justice to us? 
Where are you going to bring vengeance on these people who murdered us? That's what your baby will cry out. Your baby could be there to help you when you become old. But your baby's blood will point to the ground today. And it will cry out to God for justice. That you stole its life, that you bore false witness against it. And you took its life. Your baby will cry out to the ground and ask God for justice for its unjust death. And now I want you to imagine what it's doing to America. In America, we have killed 62 million babies since Roe v. Wade. I want you to imagine the crescendo of all those babies crying out to God at the same time, crying for justice. What do you think? Do you think God is listening? You see, we think God has forgotten. We think God doesn't care. But God sees everything, knows everything. He's everywhere at once. He knows what's in your heart. He knows that He sent me to preach the truth to you. To preach the Word of God to you. What do you think those babies, 62 million babies, are saying to God right now? Imagine those babies, the blood is pouring into the ground as your baby's blood will pour into the ground today, go down the drain like a garbage. Your baby, your baby, if I go murder my worst enemy across the street, that is a terrible thing. It's, it is a wicked and sinful thing if I murder my, own, my worst enemy. We should never murder anyone. But if you murder your baby, it won't make sure you're not a mother. You'll still be a mother, you'll still be a father of the baby that you murdered. You will have to stand before God and give an answer. You'll still be the mother of a baby that you murdered. It doesn't make so you're not a mother. You see, abortion, murder through abortion does not end pregnancy, it ends the life. It doesn't end motherhood, it ends the life. You'll still be a mother. It ends the life of your child, your posterity, the gift that God gave you and called you to be responsible, to be a steward of, to bring it up in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. What will you do on that day? What will you do? So we're here to ask you to turn, to turn from this place of evil, to repent and trust in Christ Jesus. There is hope in none other. You must have a Savior when you stand before God on the day of judgment. And we're here because we care. We want to help you. We love you. Ladies, know this. Right now, know this. We love you. We care about you. We want to help you. Would you have mercy on your child today? Would you just be the one? Be different? Why, why, why be like everyone else? Be different. Step away. Step out. Be, a, be, be what a God has created a woman to be. Be a mama. Be a mother to the child that God has given you in His grace. Step away from this place. Walk away and come and let us help you. Have mercy on your child. Would you please have mercy? Can I ask you why you have judged your child to death? Why does your baby have to die? Have you thought about that? If somebody's here to help, why does your baby have to die?